since I posted the original video on Instagram as a little teaser, it's racked up almost 8,000 views and I've had you know, several comments from people saying they're, they're really excited to see it. So I, I hope you all enjoy the video as much as I've uh, you know, waited to make it. Um, so what I'm going to start off with is the, the sort of subwoofer system all assembled, the actual drivers, all six of them are, are tucked away in here and it's just hooked up to a frequency generator at the moment and I'm just going to run some uh, some sine waves and hopefully the um, the microphone on this camera can pick up the audio so we're starting off with sort of 16, 17 hertz and you can see the drivers working away in there you probably just about hear some noise coming from that so I'll slowly sweep this up in frequency and, and, uh, and see if you can hear it. fair bit these little drivers what I'm sure a lot of other people really like is the uh, the classic trick with a bag or something in front of the port so this isn't actually moving that much air at the moment But I mean, there is a there is a fair bit of airflow there. That's 24 hertz at the moment. Drop it down in frequency. You can see the drivers again working away hard. It's such a cool effect, I think. Being able to see all them, all the drivers at the same time, moving away. So starting with some music tests as well. I'm going to use a track that. I think Sundown Audio and Stereo Integrity like to use for the excursion tests. Um, it's probably going to click the microphone again, but I'll uh, try this. I've now taken the drivers out of the waveguide and they're still in their little metal acoustic chamber. So again I'm going to test with some sine waves to show you the capability of the little drivers. They really do move quite a lot for a, about a 2.75 inch driver. Let's slowly increase. possible to get a shot of all six moving but they are going and again fetch our favorite plastic bag you can see that they really do shift quite a bit of air the cone area of these drivers combined is equivalent to roughly a six and a half to seven inch woofer but just in a really flat compact package and again it's not I mean it's not the most efficient way to do things but this was you know inside a five thousand dollar TV when it was new get a shot on that as we start to dig deeper into the speaker we can remove the top cover of this metal enclosure 
to reveal the six drivers nestled inside. I think the wiring is really neat in this. I think Bose have done a really good job. It's like a miniature blow-through style box that you might see in the back of a car or something. Just miniaturised. You can probably tell that the, the drivers are quite tall, quite deep in mounting depth. So uh, let's have some semi-free air excursion. Virtually silent, very li little mechanical noise even at this sort of level of throw. Sort of see inside there, down into the spider in the coil there. I'm really impressed with these drivers. I'd be lying if I didn't say that they were my, my favourite miniature drivers. As I say, I've been wanting these for so long now. Really cool. Here, perhaps the thing that people are most keen to see is uh, a bit of free air excursion testing on these little drivers. So I've taken one of them out of the module. Notice how quiet it is. Fair bit of throw. There's a, a bit of deformation in the surround there, but it's still relatively quiet. Start to hear some noises from the, the bench there buzzing. So there you go, there's a look at the Bose Video Wave system, the subwoofer at least, the waveguide. If anyone's interested, I do have the, the left, right, centre and tweeters from the TV as well. So if anyone's keen to see how those perform, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll follow up with a video on that. But for now, at least, let's look at the Bose Video Wave transmission line subwoofer system. Looking at the TS parameters, it's possible to note that this is an 8 ohm driver with a resonant frequency of approximately 76 Hz. The motor isn't particularly powerful with a beta of around 5.9. This is likely to be attributed to the single ferrite magnet driving a thick top plate. The suspension is relatively soft, with a compliance of 680 micrometers per newton. The key values all look to be fairly balanced for a driver with this motor and moving mass. The sensitivity is quite low. This is only a single driver with a small cone, and as I pointed out earlier, all six drivers combine to produce a cone area equivalent to a 6.5 inch woofer. Next, let's look at the Clipple LSI data. Starting with the BL curve, we can see it's a relatively symmetrical, which is a good sign. The 82% value is 5.6mm, which is quite a lot for a driver this small. For the suspension, we can use the KMS curve, which shows some asymmetry, which isn't exactly as tidy as the BL curve. This might be caused by the dimples or deformation we see in the surround at high excursion. Looking at the total driver displacement, it's possible to confirm the driver was moving around 10mm or more each way. The laser used is limited at 10mm, but curve fitting allows the model to predict displacement without the laser. We can also study the power input and temperature increase during the test. The driver increased by just 50 degrees using 18 watts of power.
Looking at the frequency response, the system produces little output below 50 Hz, rising to 90 dB before a large spike at around 220 Hz. This is possibly the cause of the microphone distortion in the early eclipse. Let's look at the Bose Video Wave subwoofer module and drivers. Thank you for watching. Your ratings and comments really help, and if you're new here, don't be afraid of that red button.